Despite being a Pokemon fan since Generation 1, I can't say I'm excited for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. This isn't surprising considering how the series hasn't impressed me since 2012, but the leaks have actually shown signs of promise. Premise sounds fresh, and working in a few Go mechanics makes sense considering how it boosted Pokemon's media presence, though my opinion soured as more was revealed. To keep this brief, I'll focus on the two key points that put me off the game, while also elaborating on the aspects I'm actually in interested in. My first worry is the thought of returning to Kento. Several fans revolted against this, stating that the series moved on to better locations since then. My issue, however, lies with Pokemon's inability to move on from its inception. While Kanto nostalgia was present since Generation 2, it became extremely noticeable in X and Y with the amount of special treatment given to its selection, and the similarities Kalos has with it. Sun and Moon expanded on this further by giving Alola forms to Kanto Pokemon only, as well as tying several key characters to the region. Kanto nostalgia has come to a head here, as it'll be the second time a full game is set there since Generation 1. This reminiscence is unhealthy, not because Kanto is a bad world, but rather what it represents about the series. Because Game Freak feel the need to set the games there, it's proof that they're not confident about their ability to form new worlds and have to resort to ideas that were already explored. No one hope I do have is that maybe realising Tajiri's original vision for Kanto's appearance in HD will exhaust their ideas for the location, and allow the development team to finally move on. My other point is the excruciating amount of handholding shown in the pre-release material. This has plagued the series for some time, hitting a peak with Sun and Moon where some players gave up due to how the games assumed that not only did their audience not understand the basic mechanics, but also believe that they haven't played a game in their lives. The handholding has gotten so bad here that the gym guide even states that players cannot fight Brock without a Pokemon that Rock is weak to. Compare this to the original Pokemon Yellow, where players could test the waters with a trainer whose team would prove that your Pikachu is not useless here. Learning from their mistake, the player would then find a Pokemon that would get the job done, such as a Nidoran that knows Double Kick which rock types are weak to. This example alone does a fantastic job of teaching the player about type matchups by allowing them to see what works for themselves. With Let's Go, however, the player is forced to take the easy route, preventing them from receiving a proper learning experience of the game's mechanics, and testing their skill by experimenting with less favourable Pokémon. It's like if a teacher told you all the answers to a test right before you entered the exam hall. This is condescending to not only younger audiences, but also casual players who might want to start playing Pokemon. This isn't the only instance of this questionable design philosophy, as the developers have also stripped other mechanics such as the practice of weakening the Pokemon in order to catch them, meaning they can't receive experience points for knocking them out should they not wish to perform the capture process. The reasoning the developers provide doesn't help either, with Masuda stating that the classic catching mechanics were too difficult to grasp. While I'm welcome to change, outright dumbing down the mechanics for both older and newer players is an incredibly misguided approach to re-innovating the series. I could go on about other tired Pokemon habits that haven't been altered here, but there are some ideas presented that I'm all over, several of which I'd love to see in the Generation 8 games. No, with Game Freak's track record of axing features, I'll keep my fingers crossed. The first concept I love is replacing random encounters with interactable Pokemon on the map. Let's face it, random encounters are a JRPG design quirk that should have died out long ago. They slow down the pace of the game heavily thanks to a combination of loading times, overly bombastic animations, and sometimes severely high encounter rates. Removing them from Pokemon not only eliminates the aforementioned issues, it also allows the game world to feel less barren as you can actually view species like Pidgey roaming the map. Game Freak seem taken with people and Pokemon coexisting. Axing random encounters takes this notion to a new level, as the two parties won't be separated by these abstractions. One other feature I'd love to see expanded upon is co-op play. From its inception, Satoshi Tajiri intended socialisation to be at the forefront when developing Pokemon. What better way to continue towards this notion than having players work together? Not only will this improve collaboration skills, it would also allow for more interesting team setups and movesets with the added importance of double battles. This added layer of depth goes a long way towards increasing the game's replay value. Now judging by the previous games where players can just plough through 
through with stand moves. I have a feeling that I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. Even so, if placed in an entry with more mechanical depth than what's been shown to us here, there's a brilliant idea for a game mode which could contribute to the already huge amount of playstyles offered. To summarise, I don't believe this game is nearly the betrayal that some Pokemon fans are making it out to be. There are some brilliant ideas being showcased which can not only streamline the series, but also help the core gameplay move further towards harmonising with Tajiri's vision. No, it's undeniable that Game Freak haven't strayed away from their worst habits, and in some cases, have outright embraced design trends which several players heavily disagree with. It's obviously too early to come to a final decision about the game's quality. No, what I will say is that I'm not fully impressed with what I've seen so far. If the rest of the pre-release period fails to change this mentality, then this might end up being the first entry that I pass up on entirely. Any feedback will be strongly appreciated, as it will help the channel grow more effectively.